Welcome to the show, Five Shirt Fam. I'm AJ. Before we get into it, become part of the notification squad by hitting the bell next to the subscribe button on YouTube. Welcome to another episode of Five Stripe Weekly and Atlanta United. They played in the AmFam Cup, the made-up trophy for the friendly against Pachuca FC. Uh, frankly, all trophies are made up to that degree, but uh, this one, uh, of course, bears the name of our sponsor, American Family Insurance. And uh, yeah, you know, this one uh, was uh, started off very, very bright and electric start. And, uh, you know, the attack very much uh, looking very lively and... You know, Jose Martinez starts it off by scoring that first one. Uh, But yeah, you know, this attack is quite, quite tasty. Marcelino Moreno, he starts off that first goal with that uh, counter. And he finds Jose Martinez, who finds uh, Luis Araujo in space, who... Yeah, he's going against some attackers, or some defenders rather, and uh, he shoots it right at the goalkeeper, but Jose Martinez is right there to get on that parried ball and hits it into the top of the net, Uh, and it's great to see the King back on the score sheet, Uh, and then, yeah, you had uh, yet another counter, and yeah, Luis Adarujo, he uh, find some space and he's able to uh, fake the keeper out just slightly just long enough to uh, you know hit him at the near post uh, you know definitely uh, kind of a reverse ball uh, that he found the near post and yeah uh, Luis Adarujo, uh definitely was one of the guys who was uh, kind of pretty much helping us look like world beaters uh, against a very strong Pachuca FC side uh, in that uh, last season for them. Uh, They were first in many categories, uh, a high-pressing team, a team that uh, scored a lot of goals. And uh, yeah, I mean, obviously they're not in mid-season right now, so they're probably not uh, really in a lot of form. But LA United... Yeah, we needed some exercise. We needed a run out, uh, you know, Tuesday before the Sunday match. And uh, it seemed like we were able to get uh, a lot of a lot of players a good look for Gonzalo Pineda so that he has some uh, some food for thought. And I mean, yeah, you know, getting to that lineup and how to how it looked from the beginning. Uh, Cisneros on the left. Jose Martinez up top, and Luis Adarujo, of course, on the right, and Marcelino Moreno in the 10 spot. Um, of course, that's with an eye on without Tiago Almada, who, uh, yeah, uh, we know that uh, got suspended from the uh, from the little red card that he got arguing with the ref and apparently made contact with the ref versus the Columbus crew. Uh, in our last match in the league. So, yeah, this is with an eye on without Almada in the squad, what it would look like. And, yeah, you know, the attack uh, looks pretty cohesive. Uh, Ronaldo Cisneros, the out ball at times, and uh, a guy that looks like he could create a little bit from the left as well. Maybe not beat his man, maybe like Marcelino Moreno could, but... Uh, definitely provides a different attacking option there on the left wing. Uh, we'll see if that uh, is the case on Sunday against Inter Miami. But uh, Cisneros, he didn't uh, he didn't lose the spot, uh, you know, playing uh, there on the wing. Uh, but I would say there was another player that uh, has been, I think, uh, probably our hottest striker. Uh, in form for sure and uh, no doubt because uh, versus the Columbus crew he scored a bike and uh, yeah in this one he helped us uh, with his kind of low screaming uh, maybe not screaming but low finessed shot to the bottom left corner uh, 
uh, to give us that third goal and the lead. Uh, but in between that, Pachuca, they definitely grew back into the match in the first half. And it was, yet again, a set-piece goal. Uh, header, free header pretty much. Uh, definitely not something that uh, we haven't seen before. It's a uh, deja vu over and over, unfortunately. And then yet another soft goal. Uh, back post not covered uh, for the second goal. And it's just something that's symptomatic with this squad. Uh, and that's probably why we might bring some players in uh, to, uh, you know, maybe short up that defense a little bit. We'll get into that in the news shortly. But uh, also, Rocco Rios Novo, he played a part in this the entire match, actually. And yeah, Rocco Rios Novo, uh, you know, not at fault really for the two goals, made some decent stops and very brave on the ball. Uh, definitely always available and wanting to play out from the back. So, Definitely, uh, yeah, some real good food for thought for uh, Gonzalo Pineda, you know, obviously. So there was uh, an Atlanta United 2 match that Rios Novo played a part in, and uh, there were several goals that uh, were conceded. And that's, uh, yeah, you know, whether it was his fault or not, um, you know, apparently it, uh, there's some stops that he could have made, but, uh, you know, that's kind of the question with Rocco Rios Novo is, uh, is he a uh, big enough presence in the box? Can he, uh, stop the ones that are maybe a little further out, uh, into the sides of the net? You know, we shall see. He is, uh, yeah, a little undersized for, uh, you know, most maybe uh, goalkeepers in MLS as, uh, you know, you have, uh, you kind of have the the bias that they need to be over six feet maybe. But uh, yeah, you know, you've seen maybe a Nick Romando uh, in the past, uh, players like he who can do the job and have done really, really well, uh, you know, for their career being slightly undersized. So it's just a matter of, uh, yeah, can he do the job? Uh, you know, definitely uh, playing over a Bobby Shuttleworth, uh, yeah, to be able to see, I think, uh, Rios Nova with the first team. I think that's uh, kind of truly what the, uh, the thinking behind that was. So a good run out for Rios Novo in that regard. Uh, and then that second half when we pretty much changed uh, all 10 outfield players and Rios Novo was still in goal. The kids were playing and yeah, you saw, saw Noah Cobb who uh, looks very, uh, very poised for his young age. I think he's just like 16 years old and uh, he's definitely one for the future where, yeah, he reads the game quite well and, uh, yeah, has that little bit of athleticism to be able to handle some of the uh, more pacier players, too, and uh, impose himself. So definitely a good uh, run out for him. Uh, yeah, you have uh, Centeno start as well, or not start, but, uh, you know, get the look in the second half. Uh, Johnny Fortune in the middle of the park. Uh, yeah, definitely some LAI 2 players that are uh, something to look for and see <clears throat> how they uh, could uh, you know, play a part into the first team because, of course, we are so depleted. But, uh, yeah, you also saw Santiago Sosa play in the middle of the park as well. Uh, he had to go off a little bit... Uh, uh, pretty early, uh, unfortunately. Maybe that was just a little precautionary. But, uh, yeah, definitely, you know, <laughs> to be able to keep... <laughs> Pachuca FC, they're, again, no slouches. And for that uh, probably middle of the second half, they were still playing with the starters. And uh, the kids who started the second half, they... Pretty much uh, looked pretty poised, and they shut out the opposition in the second half. So, 
definitely, uh, you know, I think some growth in that. Uh, yeah, I mean, this uh, this squad looks a lot deeper after you include some of the LA2 boys in there and seeing what they can do. I think, uh, you know, that's definitely uh, gives some, some kind of reprieve maybe into our worries on, uh, you know, our long, long injury list and, you know, where there's a lot of experience that uh, is now missing from the squad. But some of these kids could help in that regard. And, uh, you know, with some of the other more experienced players like Alex DeJohn, he can help mentor some of those younger kids so that they can grow into the uh, the squad and uh, maybe play a bigger part in the second half of the season. But uh, yeah, you know, it's <laughs> it's a trophy that, uh, well, you know, speaking on the trophy, uh, it being a, uh, a spike that's in uh, some concrete, it's a pretty decent looking trophy that, uh, of course, LA United have now added to the trophy case. Uh, I think you can see a little bit of like cheeky grins uh, from the squad. Uh, that's you know, it's not something that is you know absolutely a um, you know a trophy that uh, they know is gonna be uh, held up high in their their memory banks or you know uh, in the annals of LA United's history. But uh, to beat a Mexican side that's a top Mexican side and I think now we're 7-0-0 against foreign opposition at the Benz uh, and that's being you know the uh, sides that are not in MLS it's quite quite good quite quite good of a, of a stat there uh, we leave uh, another Mexican side just uh, probably being lambasted in the media. And uh, even though this was a friendly, I'm sure uh, newspapers in Pachuco will not be happy with their side. But, uh, yeah, you know, it's a, it's a trophy, another trophy in the uh, cabinet. And LA United, uh, yeah, you know, it's, uh, it's good to have this as a, uh, a boost to the not only, um, you know, kind of momentum, but uh, for some motivation for the younger guys and for Gonzalo Pineda for, uh, you know, the options that he might have going forward. Now, also, uh, during the broadcast, <laughs> Brad Guzan, he was part of the broadcasting booth. And as an analyst, he was, I think, quite, quite insightful and uh you know, actually brought a lot of color into the uh, the broadcast. I think he did a fantastic job. Obviously, he was talking about, uh, you know, not wanting to uh, retire after, um, you know, this injury and wanting to come back. And, yeah, it seems like, uh, though, if he did and did go into the, the broadcast booth, I mean, he's got a spot there, I think. He's someone that can... Uh, you know, bring some different, uh, some different commentary that uh, not everyone is always hearing, and especially, you know, him being, uh, you know, a homer, a uh, an Atlanta United uh, player, you know, currently as well. He definitely was uh, able to bring even more insight into the locker room, and uh, you know, really cheer on the boys from the booth as well as he's. Uh, apt to do on the pitch as well but uh yeah he did quite a good job and then also miles robinson with the uh he's just uh cool as a cucumber uh got the uh the sunglasses at the halftime uh interview with jillian sakovitz and uh you know didn't quite do as well on the quiz uh as brad guzan did but uh yeah it was uh, a fun sight to see if uh you were able to catch it but yeah, the AmFam Cup, uh, good run out, good exercise for the boys, and they move on to Sunday 
versus Inter Miami at the Benz, and we'll have that uh, match preview later on in this episode. But before that, let's get into the news. And that news, as uh, Afor mentioned, that uh, the MLS Disciplinary Committee, they fined head coach Gonzalo Pineda, and uh, they also, uh, yeah, they will be, unfortunately, suspending Tiago Almada for two additional matches, uh, and they also find Almada for uh, exhibiting aggressive behavior toward uh, the ref after the match. And so, yeah, against the Columbus crew, I mean, obviously, there were some some pretty uh, unsavory calls as uh, it's kind of been this season. Uh and most seasons, really, in MLS. But, uh, yeah, Almada now out for three matches. So it'll be interesting to see what the lineups will be. I think we saw a glimpse of it uh, with Marcelino Moreno as the 10, uh, what it would look like. And, you know, aren't you glad that, uh, you know, we all didn't listen to a certain beat reporter that uh, was calling for Moreno to be uh, to be sold? But... You know, uh, we move on. But, uh, yeah, you know, and it, there's another stat out there about uh, the uh, percentage of the season that uh, LA United players will and maybe have already been out due to injury. And Alonzo uh, will, of course, uh, be out for the season, 89% of the season. Uh, Guzan, 80% of the season. Uh, Robinson, 75% of the season. Hernandez, Ronald Hernandez, 44 to 59% of the season. Gutman, 18 to 32% of the season. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, and then uh, percentage of the season that uh, has already been missed due to injury. Uh, yeah, I mean, Joseph Martinez, 60%. Adaruju, 48%. Uh, Sosa, 46%. And Ibarra, 35%. Large, large chunks of our spine and our defense have been missing from the games this season already. And it's, yeah, just, uh, <laughs> it's pretty much why we are linked to some other players uh, in this transfer window that has just opened up. Uh, one of them being center back Juan Jose Purata. Uh, and according to Cesar Luis Merlo, uh, he will be an Atlanta United player. Uh, he is a Tigris player that uh, might come on loan with an option to buy. And uh, that's according to TUDN. Uh, he's 6'2", 24-year-old defender, uh, central defender, and uh, yeah, has 26 senior appearances for the Liga MX side. Uh, in his career, uh, not too many really to uh, to say. Really, uh, he's had about four in the Clausura uh, this past season, uh, this past half season. So he definitely was not favored by head coach Miguel Herrera. Uh, so yeah, maybe a loan with an option to buy, pretty low risk. Someone that uh, obviously brings some size uh, could be someone that could help. The uh, just very low numbers in the squad that we have at the moment and bring some slight experience uh, to the squad. Now, another transfer rumor for a goalkeeper this time, Raul Gudinho. He's a former Chivas goalkeeper, uh, and he's been linked with the move. He's a 6'5", 26-year-old from Mexico. Uh, yeah, also, Parato was also a Mexican uh, player as well. But, uh, yeah, this one linked with a free transfer, uh, and he's made five appearances for the Mexican national team. He has played a part in some training camps for Tata Martino. So, very interesting to see if Gudinho is a player that uh, we would be bringing in. Uh, not a player that uh, maybe is highly, highly rated by their fans uh, in terms of Chivas. But, uh, yeah, someone that obviously brings a lot of size there in 6'5". And uh, we'll see, you know, if he's brought into the squad and, you know, for a free transfer. I think, uh, yeah, we're kind of bargain bin 
hunting at the moment, unfortunately. And with the ro roster restrictions, it kind of has to be the case, unfortunately. But uh, moving on from that, uh, American goalkeeper Josh Cohen, uh, who was linked with LA United, he has agreed in principle to a one-year extension with Maccabi Haifa. Uh, and... Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a report, and apparently uh, Atlanta, they came very close to signing him, uh, and other MLS teams were interested, but uh, apparently Cohen will stay one more year with the same squad uh, for their Champions League qualifiers. So, uh, you know, unfortunate, but it is uh, the case there. It seemed like, uh, yeah, Josh Cohen might be a, a good talent that could be one for the future there, uh, but... It is what it is. Maybe it is when he is a free agent next year. But uh, moving on from that, the Atlanta United Unity Kit, the 2022 Unity Kits, uh, as you can see on screen. Uh, yeah, you know, very interesting, very flowery, uh, really, really fascinating. Like, so much detail in this one. Uh, but what do you guys think? Cop it or drop it? Uh, I, of course, I'm wearing the, the one from last season, the Unity kit, that unfortunately had a little bit of a typo on it from the um, the Arabic, if I recall. But uh, this one, they seared clear of the uh, of any languages and, yeah, just went for something that's a little less, uh, you know, something that the people can pick apart. But, uh yeah, moving on from that, MLS and Apple, they agreed to a 10-year, $2.5 billion deal, which will see Apple TV broadcast every MLS match. That's really, really huge news, actually, for the league, because uh, we've been crying out for this. It's something that uh, a lot of fans, they can't catch every single match, even of their favorite team. And, uh, yeah, now I think this is kind of... Uh, you know, made a little space that, uh, you know, MLS can, I think, not only with Apple, uh, with, you know, a very huge brand, they can now, uh, you know, have every single match seen. I think this is massive and it's something that uh, is forward looking as well as sports is definitely moving towards streaming versus uh, cable providers. But, uh, yeah. Uh, apparently, ESPN and Univision, they will reach some deals uh, as well. It's something that uh, yeah, might be simulcast in some senses. Uh, and apparently, you can also, uh, you will be able to uh, have the option of having the local radio broadcast as your, uh, you know, as your feed, as your audio versus uh, just the uh, Apple TV, uh, you know, talent team as well. So, uh, yeah, because especially this news that MLS will oversee all production of games. Uh, basically, they will go into the TV production business. Uh, now, they have a little bit of a side uh, doing that uh, for the uh, MLS Twitter and, you know, their podcasts and whatnot. But uh, this will be definitely a ramp up. Uh, now, uh, apparently season ticket holders will get a subscription for free, and that includes Leagues Cup and some MLS Next games, uh, and that new MLS schedule, this is massive, I think, that all games except perhaps linear and stadium conflicts will be on Wednesday and Saturday nights, that gives some continuity to the, uh, you know, what fans can expect and casual fans as well they'll n always know that games will be on wednesday and saturday they won't be guessing and i think that can i think attract more fans keep more fans and uh, that's something that uh, is massive and this all uh will take place uh, apparently uh, i believe in 2023 so this is huge i think uh yeah next season it, uh, it bodes well for MLS that uh, I, I think it's this. Like, uh, if you're old enough to remember where uh, the NBA on NBC, where it was always a Sunday afternoon, 
I think that really grew the NBC brand. It really grew the NBA brand. Of course, Michael Jordan had a hand in uh, bringing the popularity up as well, uh, you know, even further than Magic and Bird, but definitely uh, this is forward looking and I think applause goes to MLS for reaching a deal that's apparently unprecedented. Uh, it's something that uh, is the most lucrative deal uh, for streaming in the world. So, and in any league, in any sport. So, uh, quite well done. Uh, quite a U turn from what the perils were so far and what we're dealing with, you know, with all the blackouts and everything uh, regarding watching. LA United, and I'm sure other fans of other clubs around the league uh, are rejoicing as well. All right, I have to cut in and interrupt this. Upon editing of this, news came out that Atlanta and Mercedes-Benz Stadium has been named as a host city and a venue for the 2026 World Cup. That's massive, massive news, and it is uh, definitely something that it will really propel not only uh, Atlanta as one of the world cities uh, in the forefront of uh, football, soccer in the world, as, uh, yeah, it's uh, kind of been uh, kind of pontificated that Atlanta United were a massive uh, kind of swaying point for uh, Atlanta being one of the host cities in the World Cup, and uh, apparently there is news as well that uh, the turf in 2026, uh, in February 2026, will be removed for grass, uh, and it will be removed promptly after that, after the World Cup is over. But uh, yeah, what do you guys think of this news? I mean, it's pretty uh, amazing, pretty uh, special to be part of that 2026 World Cup, and uh, named as one of the host cities and venues, grass. Uh, it'll be very interesting to see uh, how Darren Eels and Co. will be implementing that into the stadium. But uh, yeah, what do you guys think? And uh, yeah, back to the regularly scheduled episode. Uh, so that does it for the news and it gets us into the match preview for this week. Inter Miami at the Benz on Sunday, 3 p.m. Uh, we, of course, uh, yeah, we played Inter-Miami to a loss last time. Uh, we saw too much of uh, their new striker, Campania, who, uh, yeah, Leonardo Campania, who uh, is definitely a guy who, uh, you know, is doing, uh, doing some bits, and he uh, will be something to contend with again uh, at the Benz, but... Uh, yeah, they've been playing better as of late, and uh, you know, uh, in terms of uh, their past games in the league, they beat the Timbers 2-1, they beat New York Red Bulls 2-0, uh, they're doing better than us at least, uh, they're, and they aren't uh, in the wooden spoon territory anymore, uh, but they're in 9th, we are in 11th, uh, they're... Yeah, they're definitely playing better without Gonzalo Higuain. Uh, we'll say that. Uh, it seems like a lot of Inter-Miami fans want Higuain gone. And uh, I don't blame you. I mean, uh, and, and I don't blame them because, you know, it seems like that era of their, uh, you know, of last year with Blaise Matuidi, Rodolfo Pizarro, uh, just some of the more established talents that um, is a little bit more well-known just doesn't work out and uh you know it's really not a surprise anymore i think uh around the league you're not really seeing uh you know these well-known dps just uh really tearing up the league like uh, maybe zlatan and uh wayne rooney before them but uh you know and where they're making uh waves to pull their team into uh you know playoff MLS Cup contenders it's just not really happening but uh, you know it's quite quite interesting um, you know this side that's uh, while they're playing better uh, I still think that we can 
uh, get them at the Benz, uh, Columbus Crew, that game aside, we played well, I think, in the Crew match. We just uh, have those moments of madness that undo us. I think if we can shore that up, not give up any soft goals, uh, we might be able to, uh, you know, at least get a result in this match uh, against a side that, yeah, Inter Miami's kind of had our number at times. But, uh, you know, getting into that starting 11 prediction, let's uh, let's get into it through the lines. And I think uh, Rios Novo has earned that, uh, that at least start for this match to see. And, uh, you know, Shuttleworth, uh, you know, whether he... Uh, is at fault for a lot of these goals or not, that's uh, one for debate, but I think Rios Novo should get the start in this match. Uh, definitely very calm and collected on the ball. Uh, into that back line, it will be Lennon, of course, at right back, uh, Alan Franco, Alex DeJohn as the two center backs, and Caleb Wiley, I think, uh, you know, with the start in the AmFam Cup, a good run out of uh, 45 minutes. He will get the start in this one as the left back. Uh, Hosetu will return into the 11, I think, uh, as that um, as that number eight. And then uh, Ibarra will be the number six in the midfields. And uh, going across the attacking midfielders, I think it's Luis Araruju as the uh, as that uh, uh, right-sided attacker, uh, it will be Marcelino Moreno in the middle as the number 10. And Dom Dwyer, I feel like, will get the start on the left. Uh, he's very much in form. He might uh, you know, be the guy who tracks back. Uh, but uh, he will definitely be up there in the attack with Joseph Martinez up top. Uh, you know, Two uh, guys who saw the back of the net with their goals uh, in the AmFam Cup. Definitely, I want to see them start and, yeah, hopefully be able to get us, uh, you know, that three points that we really, really need to move up into the standings in the second half. Started off right, and uh, I think it's going to be a 2-1 win for Atlanta United uh, to get us going in the second half of the 2022 season. We need to get the ball rolling quickly. And uh, yeah, this hopefully, uh, this match will be one of the catalysts to start that second half surge that we really, really need. But what do you guys think? Let us know in the comments below what your predictions are. Lineup, score prediction. But that pretty much does it for the match preview and the entire show, except for the question of the day. And the question of the day is, what did you think of the American Family Insurance Cup, the AmFam Cup, uh, the formats, the, uh, you know, all the little things that were customized, the trophy, the, uh, the whole experience if you went to the game? Let us know in the comments below. Looking forward to what you have to say. But guys, that is the episode. Remember to like, share, comment, subscribe. I've been AJ. Thank you so much for watching.